We have a super fun IG Live today. If you were just watching Morning Express, uh, I just hopped off a live shot about Halloween costumes. We had so much fun, got to include my kiddos on this one. Um, so switching gears, we are now in our Instagram Live family. Thank you all so much um, as always. And today I'm so excited to be joined by a dear friend and expert on HGTV, a lifestyle expert and executive producer, really a jack of all trades, Brian Balthazar. Um, and he, Brian, if you are watching, just go ahead and invite you. There we go. Sent a request. Go live. Good morning, people. I try every uh, week to be a little bit better at my IG live skills. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Oh, it's so good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. You look great. And I love this new space you've created in your home, right? Yeah. I so when you first posted about it. So this has been a work in progress. As you know, with working from home, I was originally in the back of my basement with like a really dark bookcase. And then I just really wanted something fresh and clean. So I, I, I realized how many people are trying to figure out their at home setup for work that I'm gonna do a behind the scenes of how to set up your live shot, whether it's your Zoom or whatever it is. And that is why I was so excited to talk to you, Brian, because your appearances on HGTV, obviously all of us have become obsessed with updating our homes. Yes, it's true. Oh, <laughs> and I've been loving watching you actually um, do some work in your own home. I'm loving the wallpaper that you put up. I'm so into wallpaper right now. And a lot of the stuff that I've been putting up, I have some that's permanent because I really love it. I'm all in. And some people are afraid of wallpaper. So I, I, you know, there's a lot of great peel and stick stuff out there. So for people who are afraid, it's easy. It's not hard. And it's it's a temporary solution, which is great. Right. That that wallpaper that you put up that was green, a lot of like green reliefs, all of this, it was very, very uh, amazing. but really a commitment if you're going to put this up permanently is that peel and stick <laughs> that is, is not that? no that, okay. that is not that's like i'm all in on that one because i loved it that much but i you know i get that like not everyone can wrap their head around wallpaper to begin with because they think of the old they think of the old wallpaper where it was really hard to take down like it was like cemented on there and you... oh sorry um do, can you hear me i can now yeah Okay. So, um, and the, people have these nightmares of, of their, their parents and their grandparents, like, scratching at the walls and spraying and it takes down. It's not like that anymore. So even the stuff that's not peeling sick is not as scary as it once was. Like, um, I'm thinking so of for, my grandmother's powder room, right? Where right, it was just right. like the old school 60s style. <laughs> my mom went through this ivy phase, and, and I think it was like the <laughs> 80s where... It wasn't like just one pattern of ivy. It was like you had the waste paper basket that was ivy. You had the wallpaper that was ivy, the border. Like you were like all in back then. Like moderation is good, you know, <laughs> baby steps. Also, if you're afraid of wallpaper, just do one wall. Like I went big on this room. And, and for people who are curious of what we're talking about, um, if you go on my TikTok um, or my Instagram, I have posted a brief look at it. And I'm gonna be posting a full, uh, full dis um, demo video of that just this weekend, actually, so um, of how it went up. But if you're afraid, just do one feature wall, and and then it will kind of it'll just feel a little bit more like a pop than it will like an assault. Here in the South, Brian, what they do still is wallpaper, matching drapes, matching bed frame, everything. They're going yeah. with the whole floral theme. I, I'm it's still the I'm the Yankee. It's um, a lot. I have not embraced that. I did embrace the monogramming. The pillows are monogrammed. But um, <laughs> before we talk about your HGTV work, your lifestyle work, because so many people are looking for you for tips, um, a personal story for people who don't know. So I was a producer at the Today Show. This is like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Brian was the senior producer at the time, then became um, a, one of the hosts on the fourth hour and has just exploded from there, gone then on air. And you have just always stayed a friend appearing on uh, HLN and different shows that I've done. So I'm so excited to do this again here today, 10 I'm years so after we first worked today. I'm so grateful. And I really do vividly remember exactly where we were standing in the hallway on the third floor when you told me you were gonna become a reporter. I remember it like, it, well, not like it was yesterday because I don't remember anything like it was yesterday anymore. But it was, I just remember exactly where we were standing, right near the glass door in the third floor. And I was like, I was honestly really impressed because I think it's an important lesson for all of us, especially 
those of us starting out in our careers as we were back then, it was kind of like, it's so easy to forget that you get thinking like, oh, I can't make a change. I can't like change course. Cause you know, as we were both producers kind of feeling like, and we both made a switch, but it takes courage cause you can convince yourself that once you get on this one track that there's no diverging from that. And I was like, I remember thinking, wow, well, if she's doing it. Maybe I should, you know, like it was, it was inspiring to me. So you didn't even know it at the time, but I still remember it very vividly. And it's so exciting to watch you. And I actually was in Atlanta one time coincidentally where you were the, the like, guest speaker and I didn't even know that you know so it's funny how life brings you full circle with your friends and I love that so and I've watched you just the same I was so impressed with you while I was already there as the senior producer and then I watched you grow into this on-air personality and then you were the executive producer at so many shows and you've been at The View you've just done so much but now this new step into HGTV it's everybody's obsession I mean this is why now you can't buy a new home unless um, everything's updated. It's all your fault. Right. <laughs> right, right. So for many, many years, I worked behind the scenes at HGTV as what was called there a director of a program, VP of programming. And, and so with a bunch of other p amazing people, it was a great place to work. Um, and we would kind of supervise the production of shows happening all over the country and the world. And then about a year ago, I decided I wanted to do more on the production side so I stepped away from that side, and it just so happens that around the same time, I got an opportunity to host a, a, what's called a pilot, uh, a test show for them that aired, and a, um, a colleague of mine named Lauren are doing a talk show um, that will be airing on some entity within the HGTV family soon. And I agree with you. My mom and I used to watch it incessantly. Uh, and I love what I love about HGTV, on top of the fact that I'm kind of a design junkie, mm -hmm. I like that... Um, I can go to sleep afterwards and not have nightmares, you know? <laughs> you, know that, I mean, you mean I, not working in news? I watch a lot of news and it stresses me out. I love morning news, <sighs> afternoon news, but I can't do night news. And I can't do, like, I love the murder shows. I love the Discovery ID shows and Law and Order. But I, I, I have to, like, be thoughtful about what I'm watching at night. So I can handle watching a beautiful reveal any time of day. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why it's been exploding, especially in this pandemic. Everyone's looking at their house and they're like, okay, what can I set up behind me? What can I do? What are some of the really great tips that you learned shooting this pilot? Things that people can do that's also affordable. Lots right. of us are tightening up our purses. So what yeah. can we do? Well, first of all, one of the things I would say to start is start, if, if you don't know what you want, Go to Pinterest, go to House, go to HGTV, go to TikTok. There's so much inspiration. I even still like say, that's the room I want in my house. And find a way to adapt a certain look to your room. Because it's really intimidating what you get. If you go into the hardware store not knowing what paint color you want, it's going to be it's going to be a journey. Because you are not going to be able to pick it out. Even if you just need the color white, there's 50 whites. So I like to browse the web and say, okay, this is the room I would like to feel like I'm in when I'm in my house. And often the easiest thing, obviously, you know, we've been saying it for years, is a can of paint. But there, are, can of paint can be anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars, depending on the, the quality level of the paint you get. Um, paint is the easiest way. I also um, think that now more than ever, as we talked about peel and stick wallpaper. Now, if you want to do your backsplash in your kitchen, there's peel and stick vinyl backsplashes, so you don't need a tile cutter. You can yeah. cut through the tile, and they look. We actually used it on the show Renovation, and um, they're really good looking. The, if you want that barnwood feel, you can get peel and stick barnwood, very thin slats to put on. So even if you're a renter, you can still do those things and not destroy your sheetrock. I think we're all afraid of destroying our sheetrock and our walls. Um, the other thing I would say is, I was going to say, I think uh, we're in this time where a lot of people are struggling with finances. And what a lot of people have discovered is if you have a lot of clutter, you can sell it. You can repurpose it and sell it. You'll be surprised at what some people will buy. And if the option is to throw it away um, or have that garage sale next year, which you may not ever have, go on Facebook Marketplace, go on Google, uh, uh, what's it, what's, oh, I can't think of it, Craigslist. Go on Craigslist, you can go on eBay, all of these different platforms and people will buy things at a discounted rate and you'll be rid of them. Sometimes, as we all know, when we're stuck in our houses, we realize we have a lot of stuff. Yes. A lot of stuff we don't need. 
you know? Do you know what I recently sold is that big, ugly bookcase that I used to do live shots behind. I was like, this no. thing <laughs> needs to go. Yeah, sold that. I mean, I've been doing that, but just sort of purging everything yeah. in my house. But you're talking specifically with this show, Rentervention. It's, it's targeted to renters. Mm -hmm. What is it that you go in and do? Tell people about it that haven't seen it. So this was a competition show, and this was a pilot, so we're looking to see how it did. Um, where two designers went into two different rentals and they're challenged with two days to do as much as they can to that rental that obviously landlords will not freak out from. So that means no demolition. You know, uh, can you, you really can't replace the countertops, but you can put an adhesive over them. Um, there are more and more you can do with your countertops if you hate your countertops too. You can look that up on TikTok. It's amazing. So what can you do to your, your home or rental that's not going to break the bank and not going to destroy anything that will then cost you later? So, um, and it's surprising just how many things you can do. Now more than ever, there are options that are not permanent. You know, there are lamps, beautiful lamps and hanging fixtures with plugs instead of hard wiring, peel and stick wallpaper, peel and stick backsplashes, peel and stick countertop replacements. Um, now some of them aren't gonna last 20 or 30 years, but that's okay too. You know, um, I think sometimes you don't want it to last 20 or 30 years. You're gonna have a change of heart eventually about those things as well. Especially if you're renting, and that's the whole yes. point, is that you, you don't want to put in all this money in a place right. that you're going to be there for a year or two or three. Um, right. How do you deal with the personalities of the renters? Because um, that's the whole thing about HGTV that's so fun, is that you get these people opinionated sometimes, yeah. indecisive. As the designer, right. when you're dealing with all of those different personalities, how do you put up with it? Well, I mean, I think you really hope out of the gate that, they're, that they understand that the the destination is worth it. But yeah, there's some people that just can't let go of stuff. And there does come a point where you have to level with them and be like, do you want to stay in the place that you're in? Do you want that? Because we can walk away right now. You know, if that's what you really want, um, uh, sometimes you have to bring on the tough love. You really have to do a personality read on someone because everyone responds to uh, feedback <laughs> differently. So if you don't love something in someone's house, you know, we all have a friend, we don't love something in their house and you have to debate whether or not it's worth telling them or pretending you like it, you know? And so, <laughs> and fortunately, unfortunately in this show, you don't have the luxury of just pretending you like it. You're like, here's what we could do differently. And some people, you know, the other thing is people attach emotion to things. We all do it. I do it. Like there's some things in my apartment right now. I can't show you, it's a mess right now. I'm sorry. I don't believe I, you. I only need this You're always so put together. Yeah. This is the only area I need to be clean and it's gonna stay that way. You have no idea what this looks like. <laughs> yeah. It's chaos all around me. Um, but I, there's some things that I'll never throw away because my mom gave it to me. It's out of mm -hmm. style, sure, but it's my mom's. You know, my mom's gone. And so there are these things that you'll always attach. But there are other things that, you know, I, I actually, here's another example. I, um, and this is also on my TikTok, is my aunt gave me an old hutch. And it's outdated. And I'm like, I think she would probably have freaked if she saw that I was gonna paint it. You know, mm -hmm. there's those who paint wood and there's those who never paint wood. And I painted it. I'm like, you know what, I love this. Now I'm gonna give it its second life and I'll always have it now in a room that I probably wouldn't have had it in before because I'll appreciate it more now. And I'm like, that was your aunt's, you know, when I see my, you know, relatives that see it. So yeah. anyway, um, so Ladon, give things a second life. I love that idea too, because it's um, an affordable way to get a new piece of furniture, something that would cost you thousands of dollars. You just pay for the paint. LaDonna was asking what the name of the HGTV show is. It's Rentervention. It was a pilot that aired last yes. week. They're waiting to see how it does and hopefully it gets picked up. But Brian was telling us that he's also going to be hosting a talk show that's coming on the network also. Um, one of the things that I'm very curious about, if we want to invest, in one piece of either furniture or uh, renovation in the home, what is the one thing that is worth the investment? Oh, wow, just one. Okay, I'm gonna rattle off just a few. Okay, okay a few will work. Of all, okay, I'm gonna, I, this is a weird left turn, but I love to cook too. Get good cookware, thin, thin, very thin cookware. It's, you're gonna burn stuff and you think you can't cook. It's not you, it's the cookware. A lot of the times, these the, the cheapest pans, I know this is not an aesthetic thing, but also beautiful, the cookware is gorgeous too. But these thin pans, uh, they are conducting heat, they're, they're absorbing the heat too quickly and you're scorching things because you've got the cheaper pan. So you want something a little thicker. Okay, that's a hard turn there. Um, I invest in a great bed. You'll never be sorry. You know, in these days, how many of us are getting a full night's sleep anyway? So for those hours that you're sleeping, like it may look the same as the inexpensive bed, but like, Get one to last if you can afford it. Just get one that you think is super comfortable and is going to last. 
Um, I know that's really tricky because they name them different things at different stores and they've got ones you can get online. And, you know, I, I suggest you go and try out a bed and lay down on it. And um, I know that's icky right now, but, uh, <laughs> but just give it, give it that chance. Uh, because I got, I finally invested in a bed that I love and it's fantastic. What I will say is you can get really inexpensive chairs now compared to the super expensive ones. For me, I moved during the pandemic. And there was kind of a halt on furniture production as there was in so many things. So I, my, tr my little trick was to get floor models of things. Floor models are barely sat on, you know, I mean, I don't really want to think about it actually, but like, but I got great deals on floor models because the seasons were, especially when you're nearing the end of a season. Um, so I got some great deals, like more than half off on pieces that were, that would have been otherwise very pricey. If you want to buy a new chair though, I, I think if you want to go with something that's poppy and a big, big pop of color, get a less expensive chair, maybe. Or if you are afraid to get a pop of color, get pops of color in throw blankets and throw pillows and go for bolder things that you don't have to have a, such a commitment to. Um, how about my ombre books? Are you so proud of me? I, I love it. I do that too. So this is super easy. It was just Wayfair. Um, I forget the name of it. I'm going to link it in my um, Zoom post that I, I put up. This was just cost plus. Like, what do you do for your at homes? I know you have to do things like this, IG lives, anything. What are your tips for people? Because I really do believe if you're working from home, if you're doing Zoom calls with your office, you should yes. make it look really nice. You should I look agree. professional. Don't show up in your PJs. Right. Just look the part. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I love what you did with your bookcase. And I like that you actually have the book binding facing out. I don't like when you see the paper, when people put the paper facing out, like, come on, you're never going to know what book that is. Did you do exactly. that? Exactly. Well, I, this is driving me crazy as I see that unadjusted. That's because my kids always go in there and they think that they're children's books. And I'm like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. This is mommy's space. Right. I, especially with bookcases, I like to have um, the highest items in the center of the shelf and then either like kind of make a commitment to either highest things on one side or the other side, just kind of be co consistent going all the way down. And I love that you sorted those by color have a piece of something that's living in the, in every room, whether it's artificial, artificial plants have never looked better than they do now. I have them in my house and um, you, you, people would never know. Although an eight year old girl came to my house recently, um, socially distant. And she said, why do you have a fake plant in there? Everyone knows it's fake. So an eight year old will tell you. <laughs> they can detect that. Mine's fake too. I've got this one back here. Um, like, see, you would so never know. Mm -hmm. you would never know especially for what you're doing like you don't have time so like there's some rooms that are just not going to get enough light to to get a great plant in there but people people will forgive it they're not going up and touching it and if they are they'll forgive you or they're rude if they <laughs> so um but also i i think framing is so important on your zoom calls do not put tons of headspace here and headspace here. frame it really nicely like you're framing a picture frame um I noticed that when I see, and listen, I, I didn't take enough time to do that. Oh, I do have something living behind me. That's actually alive too. Um, and you kept but I, I do try and like try and frame it and face the window for the best possible light because they don't, you don't want to be looking haggard. If you don't, if you can have a light on you, that's great, but don't go excessively up. Don't go excessively down. Try and be head on or just slightly up, have good light, frame it properly. And you can make almost everything look good. You know, there's people that are like, taking pictures of themselves on the beach on Instagram. And if you zoomed out, you'd see there's like trash over there and like a beached whale over here. So it's all about the cropping. <laughs> and the lighting. I'm going to link to the light that I use as well. It's so easy. It's just on Amazon. Um, but I really am curious because you said that your house is a mess. I don't believe you. Oh, this um, is. Yeah, this so place is a mess. <laughs> but you're a designer. So is it just like a mess with everything really beautifully placed? No, no. So, so the, the short version of the story is I have an apartment in New York, which I'm, it, that is kind of like, I'm not in New York much anymore. And I have a house down outside of Philly. Um, and so this is the apartment that I'm not in very much and I'm moving everything down to Philly. So I'm very blessed in that, like, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I was living in my car for a summer and now I have like two places. So I'm very grateful, very blessed. And, um, and so this place though, it's just a hot mess. Like there's, it doesn't match. Like it's kind of where all the mismatch for it. I think lots of designers and lots of, um, lots of us have a room where all the, like the mismatched furniture goes to die. And right now this is that place, like no one's coming by. So it's like, I got a plaid chair here. Um, I've got, 
you know, I don't even want to show you what's over there, but it's kind of like, I know someday I'll use it. So I'm not, I'm not going to get rid of it. I don't like it. I don't get rid of things easily. Um, you buried the lead there and I'm not gonna let you go on this. You lived in your car for a summer and then now going to this. I just want to hear a little bit about how sure. I only, I only knew you obviously as successful yeah. at the Today Show. Um, and I think it's really important for people to know how hard it is to get to the places where you feel like you've reached, you know, I, yeah. I saw on your post, yeah. just like, it's a dream come true to be on HGTV. Yeah, it, it is a dream come true. And I, I grew up in a, a family. I honestly, I don't think we had a lot of money, but I never felt like we didn't have a lot of money, you know, like we didn't get everything we wanted for sure, but I never felt like I was poor, but I think we're probably like middle to lower middle class. But I went to a great school, um, student loans, that whole thing. And I got out of school and I didn't know what to do next. I didn't have anybody to really tell me what to do next. I didn't have mm -hmm. great uh, guidance in that area. We didn't have a lot of people in my family that went to college. So I spent many years uh, working in retail. And then I decided, I, I came to a point where I wanted to be a writer. And um, I wasn't making a lot of money. I was making $50 an article and maybe got mm -hmm. three articles a week. Like it was not in Boston of all places. So it was an expensive city. Um, and I had to move out of this apartment that I was in. Um, and I was like, well, I could go back home to where I grew up, but there were no TV opportunities there, no writing opportunities there. Or I could just live in my car for a little while. I worked at a gym at the same time. So there was a shower at the gym. I didn't do much working out, clearly. I mean, <laughs> okay. <It's, yeah. laughs> but I did shower. <laughs> and You're I, clean, that's fine. I, I did, okay, we're gonna be fully honest. Like. I was single and I'm like, I'm not hooking up with people. I'm not having one night stands just for a place to sleep. Like I made a promise to myself. Like You kept your dignity, Brian. Yeah, That's I was awesome. like, I'm not, I'm all in. I had a, nine, a 1992 Plymouth Acclaim, the seats folded oh. down and I put a suit jacket on one window and suit jacket on the other, the garment hooks. And those blocked people from knowing that I was sleeping in my car and I parked on a safe street. It was the summer. And now I, it's important to know that I was not forced into living in my car. I made the choice. Like I could have easily gone home. I was unlike so many people who don't have the choice. They're forced onto the streets for any number of reasons, especially in difficult times right now. I made this choice to say, I'm going to stick this out and see if things come together, um, not pay rent for a couple months, three months or whatever, and stay at friends until I feel like I was impos imposing. Three days is the maximum you stay at a friend's house. Like you just know that you're, you're imposing after three. <laughs> both, of you, both of you want it over by that time. So I, so I didn't have that many friends. So that, but eventually I, I kind of came out of that and worked hard and stuck with it. And, uh, you know, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of glad I did it. It kind of like gave me a perspective I didn't have before, but it was not charming. It was not like living in an RV on the beach. It was not charming. It was, you know, it was just what I did. And so I feel grateful now that, you know, I've been able to turn it around. <laughs> and I'm anybody, so glad. Yeah. As dark as it is, as dark as it is, don't do things that you think you have nothing left to lose because there's still there's still light and there's still people out there to help you. You just need to stick with it. I think there are a lot of people right now that are either faced with a really difficult time and feel like nothing's ever going to bounce back. You're an example that it does. Um, and also people that may be thinking about to, trying something different and maybe scared to. Um, you and I talked about, you know, when I made that decision and I can say it was not pretty. Uh, I had all the writing experience in the world and I could put together a package, but I had never been on TV. Uh, and and I got a lot of people that looked at me and was like, what in the world are you thinking? Go back to writing. Uh, and, you know, went from working at the Today Show where you have three, four, five camera shoots to dragging my own camera. And it's right. really hard right. yeah. um, to make any kind of a change. But yeah. I think, you know, even for you, when you switch to on air, what advice do you have for people about sticking with it? Because, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've been told no, or I yeah. perceive oh it, I've failed, yeah. or I've yeah. done that, and you just have to keep pushing. Yes, I think a couple things. One is, it's like, uh, you only need one yes, and that's, mm -hmm. a, that's whether it's in TV or in life, you will always get more no's than yeses. If you're lucky to get more than yeses than most, then great, celebrate that. Um, and I think it's interesting in the line of work that we're in is people often don't realize that you don't really get to practice. You, you're out there and your practice is the work. So it doesn't happen right away most of the time for most of us. And so, um, so I've learned to, and listen, I'm not a, I'm not, um, a fresh young talent. <laughs> Same. I'm, I'm not new on the scene. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> 
We can't, we can't use that excuse anymore. <laughs> right, right. Like, I'm like, oh, look at this new guy. Now, you know, the, oh, that old thing? Okay, count the rings. It's like, I'm like an oak tree. So, um, so uh, I, but I think what's important for me is to find the joy in the other things that I do so that I don't invest all of my emotions in the effort. Like this show that I just did, it may not get picked up. And the truth is, is like, if, like any show, the majority of them don't get picked up. Like, that's just the reality. It's not that the show's even bad or, or, or it could be great shows don't get picked up. Bad shows do get picked up. Like there's, there's so many things that play into it. What night of the week was it on? Was it against something else? Were people watching the news? Were they watching their favorite TV show? Were they tired? Like there's so many factors that play into it. It's not personal. It's, it's really not always about you. Sometimes it is. Like sometimes I don't have the right look. Sometimes I look too young. Um, <laughs> Bear, that happened once um, and it wasn't recent. But I think you just have to kind of, I've now like found the joy in, in my home. And the, really like, I think we're all like learning to like find the joy in the things that are truly, truly important. And I'm grateful for every opportunity I get. And the truth is, is like, I've, I've said this to myself before, like when I go on the Today Show or when I go on HLN or I talk to you, I never know if it's the last time. I may never be asked to go on a TV show ever again. And uh, if you think about that too much, it's like depressing. We don't, none of us know in life when we've peaked, you know? And so you just like create your peaks every day. Like, oh my God, I made a good pot roast yesterday. Let's celebrate that. <laughs> and finding joy. <laughs> you know, like, I do, I, I'm joking, but I'm not, you know, like I love my yard, you know, and I love my dogs. I'm all about dogs and rescue. And so I do find that if I, if I invest too much in one having to have this one thing, whether it's a TV show or a salary that's this much, um, I'm probably focusing on the wrong things. Right, and I think right now is when we all need to be reminded of that, when we all have yeah. so many things that are changing, maybe mm -hmm. things that are really disappointing, um, that that is not the only up. thing I was gonna say. I was like, what is that? Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's my one vice. <laughs> you, you take that vice. I have found my joy in speaking with you today. I have missed you. Um, for those who are watching, who want to learn a little bit more about where to find you, I know we have your Instagram handle. How do they find you on TikTok? All different kinds of things. Yes. Now my new rule is if it doesn't have, if my name isn't available on the platform, I'm not doing it. Like I can't add underscores and lines and numbers. It's just like if Brian Balthazar on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, I'm not dancing. Don't worry. Oh, I did You're one day. I Your TikToks give me life. Oh, okay. They are amazing. Please, I, everyone, take I a like moment. to think that nobody knows I'm doing it. I like, I like to think that nobody sees them, but I end up like, oh, because I think the majority of my audience on TikTok is like 13 year olds and they don't know anything. They, they're like, who's the old guy that got a <laughs> login? You know, like, so <laughs> who let this guy in who's doing like dramatic theater and <laughs> it's bringing me so much life. <laughs> so please, everybody, go check it out. I have. Praying that your show gets picked up, but I also know that you have the talk show that's coming up. You have your hand in all different kinds of projects. And I'm just so proud to have you as a good oh, friend. And it has too. just been um, wonderful to see you grow throughout these years. When I thought 10 years ago, you were like super duper successful. Uh, like, the, the, you know, you were like a version of my boss there. <laughs> um, so thanks, Brian. Thank and you so much. It's, it's such a joy. I love watching you every day. I see you and um, I, I'm following you and I'm, I'm so thrilled to be your friend and thankful thank to be invited. Thank Mwah. you. See ya. Talk soon.